Greetings, everyone. Dr. Susan Brown, the director of the Center for Better Bones and your bone health advocate. Once again, we're back your questions. These questions first are going to be about nutrients. Like Audrey asks, better bones, better body, you recommend 20 key nutrients. Is it better to take all of these in what combination and are there any contraindications? So these 20 nutrients that I've identified are actually essential for bone health. They can all be taken together. There's really not a problem. And the only counterindication is that you, if you're using a particular drug, that is a blood thinner, this Coumadin, you don't use vitamin K, and there is vitamin K in these formulas, but that's the only counterindication. These are really very life-supporting vitamins and minerals. You can take them all, we put them together. It's much easier to use that way. Rhonda, Rhonda writes, I'm taking a supplement called Bone Up, and it has the things that you talked about, vitamin K, magnesium D. I had a doctor tell me to make sure I didn't take calcium, to, to, I, to be sure that I take a calcium that has boron. What's the purpose of boron? And the first, let me tell you that Bone Up, I know the developers of Bone Up, they're really fine people, but Bone Up only has like nine or 10 of the key bone nutrients. We're talking about the need to get all 20 of them. That's why our Better Bones formulas and the formulas we use here at the Center for Better Bones are more comprehensive. They will always have boron in them because boron is a mineral a trace mineral that the body needs actually, maybe about three to six milligrams a day. It conserves calcium, it spares the other minerals in the body, and particularly if you're low in magnesium, it might help even to enhance your estrogen when you were low in magnesium. It's mineral sparing, very good to use, comes in a lot of fruits and vegetables, as well as in the 20 key bone building nutrients. Judy asks, what is Dr. Brown's opinion about algae kale? Not the strontium, just the algae kale. Does it compare with what she sells? Hard to compare. Again, algae kale has about five nutrients in it, and of course their claim to fame is calcium from algae, which is perfectly fine. I know some Brazilian folks years ago who started producing calcium from algae, and it's a fine sort of calcium. But remember, the Better Bones, Better Body perspective tells us that it's not just calcium. In fact, there's other nutrients that are more important than calcium. In fact, calcium is very highly fortified in our diet, and most of us get a lot of calcium, but it's all those other 20 key nutrients, manganese, zinc, copper, boron, folic acid. All these things are extremely important, and we see that with bone health, you need to supply all of them. So that's why we stick with the formula that I developed that has 20 key bone building nutrients. Judy writes, I have read that you shouldn't take calcium with a multiple vitamin. There's calcium in my multiple. Calcium is absorbed by certain sites on the tissue and calcium can compete with magnesium for absorption, for example, but the competition is so small that it's not worth the trouble. You certainly can't take all these 20 nutrients separately. It would be really very burdensome. And isn't that, I've often asked my mentor, Dr. Russell Jaffe, should we try to separate the calcium and magnesium? And his point, it's the, so little is the competition, so little difference in absorption that it's really not worth the effort to separate those. Just be sure you get them. Don't worry about if they're combined with one another. That's what we say. Marion says, I just found your site. Was recently diagnosed with osteoporosis. My score, my T-score was minus 2.8. I know that minus 2.5 puts me in the range, um, but how bad is 2.8? Well, again, remember that's the T-score comparing you to young people. Uh, that is not an unusual T-score. Maybe 40% of the women over 50 will have a T-score like that, so it's not unusual. You wanna maybe look at the Z-score, which compares you to people your own age. Anytime your Z-score gets to be minus 1.5, minus 2, then you know you have a very much lower bone density than people your own age. So you want to look and see what could be the cause of this. And also remember weight's so important. There's a direct linear relationship between body weight and bone density. If, Marion, if you're a very thin person, you're gonna have a lower bone density because the machines just work that way. It does not necessarily mean that your bones are less strong. However, in all cases, we do not wanna see a continued bone loss. We wanna see the bones either be stable 
maybe perhaps lose just a little tiny bit because these bone density tests really aren't that precise. But if you have ongoing loss that's significant, then we should pay really good attention. Marion also wants to know about plant source calcium and collagen products. Um, again, I, the same comment about calcium. Calcium's fine. Billions of dollars have been spent trying to prove that calcium would prevent osteoporosis, rebuild bone. It just does not happen. You need many, many nutrients. In fact, the new research now is moving to multinutrients, things that we said decades ago. Collagen, I really like. The hair, skin, and nails, they're all of the same kind of collagen. Years ago, I started, when I was an anthropologist living in South America, I started taking gelatin. And sure enough, your nails will grow strong because it, gelatin is a form of collagen that really stimulates the growth of collagen in the body. So I like collagen. We're researching now a particular kind of collagen that is from fish scale. Seems to be particularly helpful for bone, and we'll keep you informed about that. Diane writes, Hello, I am reading about magnesium bisglycinate. Is it the best form of magnesium for you? Magnesium is a really important nutrient. It's one of the totally overlooked nutrients. It's one of the nutrients that's lost in food processing right away, and it's one of the nutrients that really builds bone. I think you'll remember me talking about magnesium where they did this study in Europe. The people with the highest magnesium level over a long, long-term study didn't have any fractures. Magnesium is very important. Glycinate or bisglycinate is a good form. Citrate is also a good form. There's many interesting forms of magnesium, but glycinate's a great one. We tend to use a mix of different salts, like glycinate, ascorbate, citrate. They can all work together. Then Joan, uh, I guess it's Joan, Carl Joan wrote, what about the form of magnesium? Oh, then same question, magnesium citrate, magnesium glycinate, those are all fine forms. The trick with magnesium is there's a certain percentage of people that will get a loose stool, even diarrhea, when they take magnesium. And what's that about? That's because they have a block to magnesium uptake. It's that their cell, the calcium magnesium ATPase that takes up magnesium is blocked, often due to heavy metals and other toxins, so they can't absorb the magnesium and it causes loose stool. My mentor, Dr. Russell Jaffe, has figured out a solution to this. It's a little liquid called choline citrate. You take a teaspoon of that twice a day with your magnesium and it corrects that problem of loose stool. If this is your case, let us know. Send us an email or jot us a, a communication and we'll send you the research protocol on this and the simple way to correct loose stool from magnesium. And don't think, oh, I'm allergic to magnesium, I can't use it. No, you need it, but you have a block to magnesium uptake. The next question on nutrients is from Melanie. I've been wondering if plant-based calcium is better to absorb. Now, it's so interesting. This company, these companies that sell plant-based calcium have done a great marketing job. And there's nothing wrong with plant-based calcium, but it's not going to do the trick. These companies that show bone growth with that, it's because they use strontium in drug doses, which is, a, let's say, an artificial way to stimulate bone, which is the kind of thing that when you stop using it, you're going to lose that bone right away. And there really haven't been long-term safety studies on high-dose strontium. We're talking 650 or so milligrams a day. Catherine writes, I've been wondering about the very thing. Can you direct me to where? Oh, so Catherine is wondering about the microbiome and bone health. And this is really very interesting. Uh, actually, the gut, and, uh, the gut and the bacteria in the gut and the bacteria in the gut are, we have 10 times more cells of bacteria than human body. These bacteria produce nutrients and some of them produce vitamin K and other factors that really are important to the body. We're going to talk a lot more about the microbiome. There's plenty of references. In fact, you can just go to Google and search it yourself. Just saw a new article on the microbiome. Very important that we have the kind of correct bacteria to build bone strength. One of the, one of the probiotics, one of the bacteria they found very helpful is L. rutieri. And I think I wrote a blog on it. You can find it in our blogs. Emma writes, I see that the, your Better Bones Builder contains soy with my thyroid condition. Should I, you know, can I take this? What's, <clears throat> the Better Bones Builder does not contain soy. It's that the FDA has now regulations that if you even grow 
say you grow a particular, say you grow a vitamin like folic acid or something, on a, or a B vitamin on the base of soy, you have to say it has soy. There is no soy antigen in that, and it really is not a concern. And the thyroid situation, what happens is high amounts of soy may suppress the thyroid, but even if everybody takes small amounts of soy, it certainly will not affect thyroid function. So I wouldn't worry about that. I wouldn't worry about that. I would think about stress. The thyroid is connected to the adrenals, to the pituitary. I know in my own case and many other cases, our stress response is really <coughs> damaging to bones. So don't stress over a little soy. Find ways that you can eat a whole healthy diet and, 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 feel, and feel comfortable and, and things that make you feel uplifted. Dave writes, I'm 60 years old and went, uh, well, this is Dave, but it's got to be Diane or somebody, but maybe Dave, whatever. I'm 60 years old and went through menopause at 42. I do, I have osteopenia. My question is, are there supplements for bones with no calcium included? I've tried different forms of calcium and it bothers the body. It bothers her. She believes she forms cysts in that. There are people that don't do well with calcium. Um, they may get it all from their diet or, or they may have a special situation. So sure, there's supplements without calcium. And if you want to send us a note, we can recommend a few brands for you and where you can get a hold of those. So you'd want to get all the other 20 key bone building nutrients and then get your calcium from another from the food sources. Let's see, we'll just have a couple quick questions about pH and inflammation. Uh, but this was a really interesting question from uh, Moses. What will happen if you ditch all the acid-forming food and eat only alkalized-forming foods? Well, you could technically become too alkaline. Remember, the acid-forming foods, many of them contain protein, and all protein is acid-forming. So you would, if you ate all alkaline, you certainly would, get, would not get enough protein, and your body can become too alkaline although it's very hard to do because the body has a real tendency. You eat vegetables for so many days and you're going to want some tofu, you know. It's a, very, it's a very hard thing to do, but it's not a wise thing to do. Technically, scientifically, you could get too alkaline. And certain diseases and disorders can make you too alkaline, but it's a little hard to do it with food. We want the balance, you know, maybe 60% alkaline, 40% acid, or if you're really sick, 80% alkaline, 20% acid-forming foods. Shannon writes, yikes, I'm eating a lot of greens and my skin has become yellow, greenish. Uh, so, you know, that's really interesting. I, everyone is different. Could it be that those pigments are coming through in the skin, those green vegetables? I, I've never seen it happen. But what does happen is green is associated with the liver. So it could be your liver's detoxifying, could be something going on there. I would just watch and see if it didn't pass. And then, if it didn't, I go to a, maybe to a Chinese medical doctor and ask him if that's related to my liver. Latasha, I was hit by a car two years ago, and now I have continuous muscle spasms on the side that was hit. How can I stop this? And she also has an inflamed tendon and wondering if the alkaline diet can help. The alkaline diet is very anti-inflammatory, and so it it is a very good place to start lots of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. You might want to get our pH test kit so you have all this, the equipment you need to test your pH, and you have the book I wrote, and you have sample menus and all that. In addition, what I would do is I'd take one very important alkalizing mineral, which is magnesium, to see if I couldn't help those spasms because muscle spasms are the firing of muscle but not releasing. Like calcium fires the muscle, magnesium releases it. So make sure you're getting magnesium. Work up to three, four, five, six hundred milligrams a day of magnesium. See if it doesn't help you out, along with doing the whole alkaline diet. And by the way, if a person is not alkalizing, if they can't get those pHs to 6.5 to 7.5, we then add on top of their whole 20 key nutrients more magnesium. It's a very key alkalizing mineral. Scott writes, how can consuming a lemon, which is acidic, be part of an alkaline diet? Scott, that's a great question. Here's what happens. You eat that lemon, it tastes acid because of the citric acid in that lemon. When that lemon goes through your body, that lemon is converted into bicarbonate and water. Bicarbonate is the main alkalizing factor in the body. So it's not how a food tastes when we eat it, it's what happens to the food in the body and how the food is processed. Lemons, limes, grapefruit, all very alkalizing. Uh, but if you take cranberries, they taste acid when they go in. They're acid when they go out. They're not converted. That, that acid, hypocuric acid, is not converted into a base. 
One last question here. Delia, will an alkaline diet help my GERD? Delia, I've seen many, many people who say, wow, I went on this diet. I eliminated the food I knew bothered me. I ate lots of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. I had, if I had GERD, I would do cooked foods. I'd eat simple foods, all of largely on the alkaline side, but also you need your protein, and many people get response and their GERD corrects. Hey, it's been fun. We'll keep the questions. We'll talk to you again soon.